Okay, last week myself and Doom did a live stream where we looked at some flat earthers on TikTok. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to repeat that here. I have a flat earther who thinks he can debunk gravity. His video is a minute and 47 seconds long. I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know. We'll see how many mistakes he can cram into a minute and 47 seconds. We'll see how long this gets drawn out for. Let's go. Gravity has been taught to us as the glue of the universe, a magical force holding us down. Okay, I don't think anyone teaches it as a magical force, but I do like the description, the glue of the universe. I like that. But here's the thing. It's never been proven and only exists in theories. No Ugh. So we're coming in hard straight away. And this is just the normal flat earth, um, just verbal diarrhea, isn't it? Space has never been proven. Curvature has never been proven. Gravity has never been proven. All while completely ignoring the fact that all those things have well and truly been proven. Maybe I'll do a video on the Cavendish experiment at, at some point. But our understanding of gravity is so good, we can make predictions using it. Um, you know, mass attracts mass. Absolute fact. Like I said, that's probably a topic for another video. But uh, just this, it's not been proven. It, classic, classic flat earth derp. Not in nature. Let's stick to what we can actually observe. Objects rise or fall based on density and buoyancy. A rock sinks in water because it's denser than water. A helium balloon or feather rises because it's lighter than air. And this okay, let's wind that bit back. I think there's a few things to than talk than water. about there. Let's buoyancy. start here. A rock sinks in water because... Right. Rise yeah. or fall basically observe. Objects rise or fall based on density and buoyancy. Okay. Of course, density and buoyancy have a lot of things, uh, has a lot to do with things rising and sinking. Uh, are we going to ignore the fact that buoyancy, actually, when you look at how it's calculated, uses gravity? Um, obviously, he's, gonna, he's, he's not going to mention that. A rock sinks in water because it's denser than water. A Correct. helium balloon or feather rises because it's lighter than air. What? I mean, what's he talking about there? He's talking about density and buoyancy. And he's saying that the rock sinks in water because it's uh, denser than water. And then he says the balloon rises because it's lighter than the air. Surely, uh, be consistent, you know, use the term less dense. But I like the way he's, he's including the feather in that. Like a helium balloon and a feather rise. I don't think I've ever seen a feather, you know, when I put it on the desk, just, just rise up like a helium balloon. Maybe if that feather was still attached to the bird and the bird was flapping its wings, maybe maybe it would rise then. Um, but generally, if you drop a feather, it falls downwards. And this isn't magic, it's density and buoyancy, and you can test it yourself. If right. gravity were real, how does it allow butterflies to float, but hold trillions of tons of ocean water to it? This is all the same tripe, isn't it? It's all, the, there's nothing, nothing new here. And again, if he's done any research whatsoever, the answers to these questions are so easy for him to, to find. You know, gravity... Um, we, we look at gravity in terms of newtons per kilogram. In other words, gravity is a force of attraction between two masses. It's not just about the mass of the Earth. It's about the mass of the object that is being attracted towards the Earth. I mean, I suppose technically they're being attracted towards each other. So as an object gets bigger, the force of gravity between that object and the Earth increases. So you simply can't say that the ocean is experiencing the same size force as the butterfly that is ridiculous. The, the force of gravity experienced by that butterfly is going to be negligible compared to the force of gravity experienced by a mass, you know, as big as an entire ocean. But obviously, he would have to spend 10 seconds on Google to find that out. Plus, a butterfly has wings, you know, and it can flap them. A spinning ball hurling through space. And why does gravity supposedly pull everything to the Earth, but it doesn't pull the moon into us? Why Who's, who says... What? The moon obviously is, I mean, it's complex, isn't it, I suppose, but if we're going to really simplify it, we could say the moon is in orbit just around the Earth. I know it's more complicated than that, but who says that the, the moon isn't attracted towards the Earth? I mean, I don't know where to go with that, unless he, he thinks that something in free-fall orbit isn't experiencing any kind of force of gravity, but then again, he is a flat Earther, so maybe he is thinking that. Why don't we see smaller objects gravitating around larger objects anywhere else? Think. Why don't we see smaller objects gravitating around larger objects anywhere else? Well, we do, don't we? We see the moons of Jupiter. You can get a 
telescope and we can see we can see those with our own eyes uh, or even per, good pair of binoculars orbiting uh, Jupiter. But also, again, it's the it's the pouring water on a football dumb argument, isn't it? You know, why don't I see uh, what have I got here? Why don't I see this pen lid uh, orbiting this TV remote control? You know, being attracted. it's ridiculous, isn't it? Obviously, the big mass here, everything's being attracted towards, is is the Earth. I mean, I, I feel stupid explaining that to you guys watching because you guys watching know all that. Uh, but anyway, think about this: airplanes, submarines, and engineers never account for gravity. Submarines use density and buoyancy to fill their ballast to keep their submarine rise or float. Airplanes or submarines never account for gravity when designing flight paths or underwater travel. And Sorry, did he say they don't account for gravity when designing flight paths? Why would you why would you stop to account for gravity when you're essentially doing a route plan? I don't I don't even know I mean that one is so dumb that I that is new. That is new. Gravity doesn't exist because when you plan a route somewhere, you don't account for it. Actually having said that, I could become uh, really arsy and say when when people are building roads up mountains etc or steep hills you know they'll have this kind of zigzaggy uh, road rather than just straight up uh, because of gravity etc but I won't mention that said they rely on density and buoyancy and the observable flatness they rely on density and buoyancy to plan a route Let's just listen. Is that what he's saying? Buoyancy and the observable flatness of water. The Bible gives let's, us a oh, clear the, picture. Hang on, let's rise just... or float. Airplanes or submarines never account for gravity when designing flight paths or underwater travel. Instead, they rely on density and buoyancy. He is saying that. He's saying when they plan their route, they are taking into account density and buoyancy for a route plan. Wow. And the observable flatness of water. The Bible gives us a clear picture of the Earth's design. Psalm 104 5 says. Yeah, that, that's clear. Let's chuck out all established science and uh, go with that crappy little cartoon you've got there uh, that's been interpreted from a 2,000 year old book. Interpreted in a way that believers in that book, even themselves, all disagree on. Uh, that seems That seems good. He set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be moved. No spinning, no orbiting, just a stable, immovable creation supported by God. Gravity isn't mentioned in scripture because it's not part of God's design. And <laughs> gravity isn't mentioned in scripture because it's not part of God's design. Maybe gravity isn't mentioned in scripture because the term gravity wasn't conjured up uh, for well over a thousand years after the book was written. I'll tell you what else isn't, isn't mentioned in scripture. The internet. Pornhub, none of those things are mentioned in the scripture, but they exist. Instead, he shows us the proof through his creation, stable, flat, and perfect. If gravity is real, why can't it be proven in real world experiments? Why does it rely on unobservable forces and complex math? This well, I'm sorry that you find the maths complex. It's not actually that complex. I am going to have to do a video on Cavendish experiment at some point. Density and buoyancy, on the other hand, are observable and testable. What do you think? Leave a comment and follow for more. Okay, I think you're full of it. So there we go. That was a minute and 44. He got one or two things wrong, didn't he? Uh, we'll leave it there. I'll see you later.